أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Well, they um, what they're doing oftentimes is that you have the new world rich, so you do have such that you do have some men that can um have uh, quite a bit of money while they're also young. They do exist, but you, if you look at the percentage of the population they represent, how rare they are. Uh, of course, they're very, very, uh, just, they're just very, 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 very rare. So even if you take just the Instagram model thoughts, they vastly, vastly, vastly outnumber these men that they all want and say that they deserve. So what a lot of them are saying is that, that a lot of the ladies, I mean, are saying, well, he has to have both. I'm not going to make, I'm not going to choose either or. Well, between most men in the world, they're going to have to choose between either or. And, and actually, there are going to be a lot of men that are old and don't have the stamina of a young man and don't have a lot of money because most people in the world don't have a lot of money, any demographic. Uh, and so um, what's going on is that they're pretty much saying, you don't tell us to make any choice between any two things we want, even if they're naturally mutually exclusive. And when you say, well, no, they're naturally mutually exclusive in most cases, then they're turning to a law. I mean, not looking at him. And I'm not saying they can see him and look at his face. But what I'm saying is, let's say they're, they're looking up to the heavens and saying to a law through their actions, you don't give me these tough choices to make in life. I demand it all. I insist on it all. That's what they're doing. And they're forgetting their own limits. They're forgetting um, what they don't know. They're forgetting how poor they can be at communication. They're forgetting uh, um, how annoying they can be when they change subjects uh, within seconds. They're forgetting all of these limits that they have. And they're saying, no, I deserve, I, I uh, deserve I deserve, and, and then they go down, and when they go down this list, that of course they have a list, but when they go down this list, they're not willing to let anyone, even Allah teach them through life, that they have to cross some things out or cross other things out to get the other, but that some of the things they're looking for are mutually exclusive. They're saying absolutely not. On the flip side, when you're trying to uh, get married or when the disbelievers are trying to just get with someone, for whether it's short or long term, they these same ladies are taking, uh, they're taking their own abilities and capacities, everything that they can do. And they're saying, well, if I do this, then I will not do that. They, they, they're not sitting up and saying, I can't. Or they can, rather, I'm, I'm saying they will be lying if they did that. They're looking and they're saying, okay, well, if they decide, if they do one, they will not do the other. But they explain it by saying, if I do this or I have this, then I can't do that. And they're lying because there's nothing that makes a good character and good looks mutually exclusive. There's there's nothing in, intrinsic about that. There's, there's no natural law that uh, 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 limits those capacities. They can actually quite easily do this if they have the mindset for it. So they're simply saying, well, we're just going to take things that aren't mutually exclusive and we're going to make them mutually exclusive just because. But then they're going to turn around and take things that are mutually exclusive and demand both of them from you. This is a contempt. And when somebody has this type of contempt for you, of course, you're not going to be able to expect them to become your best friend um, forever or for a week because they're not even really a friend. And that's what's really happened is that they've been trained in the West and increasingly outside the West, they've been trained and socialized, even by each other, to not be any kind of friend to you. While saying that they should be your best friend, what they really mean is you should be the best friend to them while they're not a friend at all to you. It, it always comes down to something that's one-sided, and that's what they demand. And that's why you had to deal with a lot of what you had to deal with before. Um, part of why I had to deal with it, and a lot of men listening, have to deal with this exactly because what they mean really is not what they're saying. And they mean you be her best friend. You be the best friend to her. She's not going to return that to you. Her best friend is still going to be her, her, her sister friends yeah. and maybe mom. And the worse those friends advise her to treat you, the better a friend they're going to be seen as. Yeah. And that's the thing about the, uh, the man like, for instance, with Kevin Samuels and, and uh, Abu American and people like that, Kevin Samuels has been twice divorced. Abu American maybe been divorced 10, 11 times. You know what I'm saying? Not divorced, but he divorced, you know. Uh, Hassan right mm -hmm. now, better than both of them, definitely was married 
uh, more than that, married and divorced more than that. So nevertheless, um, this is a problem. People say, well, you can't advise me. You're twice divorced. You can't advise me. You're 10 times divorced. Well, uh, that that's not for a woman. A woman would take advice from her failed mother, her mother that couldn't keep a man, her mother that's alone and lonely, you know, that ran off her dad. She'll take advice from her mother, but she won't take advice from a man, you know, that's been divorced. Uh, she'll take advice from her friend who can't, don't have a man. You know, that's why married women, they say married women shouldn't keep the company of single women, you know. She'll take advice from a single friend who can't find a man who's being ran through every night, you know, serving Arby's, you know, uh, every weekend or <laughs> during the weekday. Uh, she'll take advice from that ratchet, you know, but she won't take advice from a man that's been divorced, you know. And, and like, again, they're measuring men and women the same and we're not the same. Uh, but like I said, you know, that's their best friend, their ratchet, their mom, their whatever. That's their best friend. Uh, and, and in order for a husband to become a wife's uh, or for a wife to become a husband's best friend, they're going to have to uh, hunker down, study and, uh, you know, in, in acquiesce. Now, th there, there is a woman that's on that Lapeef, uh talk show. I don't know if you ever heard of that show. Uh, they got a panel of men. And women. I didn't see it, but I heard of it. I've, I've heard. I've heard well, of the talk show. It. There's one woman. There's, there's a there's one that always she's always contrary, and she's always like, "That's what I've been saying all along." No, you wasn't. You wasn't saying that. So anyway, uh, there's one that basically she was on that modern, you know, woman almost feminist type vibe, and she gave in. She said, "No, this ain't working. This ain't working." She she quit it. And now she she's learning to listen to men and, and, and change her whole little deal up. They end up giving her a spinoff show. You know what I'm saying? She gets it now. Mm -hmm. They gave her the other one. She'll never get a show. I don't know why she on that show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, she'll mm -hmm. never get a show. They gave this other woman a spinoff show because she gets it. And that's all that we're asking. We need you to get it. We need you to get it because when you get a dog or you get a cat, it's not fulfilling for you. If a man gets a dog and a cat, that dog and a cat serves a purpose. And that dog and a cat, you know, uh, is, is not there to replace a woman. That dog and a cat is to add, uh, uh, you know, some superfluous to a man's life. You know, uh, you know, like I said, a guard dog, uh, a cat around the house that you could, you know, pet something to do with your hands, basically, you know. And, and then, uh, you know, it gives you a sense of responsibility, you know, because that, that animal is dependent, both inside and outside. Now, with a woman, when she gets a dog and a cat, she still wants a man. She still wants a man, you know. And if a woman's raising a dog, that dog ain't finna protect nothing. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, this is this is the issue that we have. And uh, it's, it's, it's a battle. That's why I started the whole S faculty page and things like that. I say we need to discuss it. But women are not willing to join the intellectual discussion of it. They want to see everything as an attack. You know, if, if, if I say, uh, hey, you know, hey, take off that coat. You trying to steal my coat. No, you had a spider on it. But I'm going to let that spider bite you next time. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever we do mm -hmm. is considered like it's a rules or an attack. And it's never for their own protection. And we in our nature are protectors. You know, that's why they talk about women in the military. If Johnny falls down, one person goes grab Johnny. If Susie falls down, you got four or five soldiers trying to be the first one to pick up Susie and drag her to safety. You know what I'm saying? It's our nature to mm -hmm. do so. You know what I'm saying? A woman in a foxhole, you sit in that foxhole for hours, man, you're going to want to put something in her hole. That's just the nature of men and women. You can't have it. You can't have it. And we need to be uh, better in our own spaces as far as our own duties and responsibilities. And that's going to bring us actually closer together by being vastly different. As long as men and women are vastly different, we will actually come together closer. But as long as women are trying to act like men and men are trying to act like women. And man, I would love to discuss this Dwayne Wade thing with you, boy. This dude here, man. I think this dude came out the closet mm -hmm. before his son did. You know, 
But 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 nevertheless, like I say, as long as men men are acting like men, men are acting like women, women are acting like men, and they think that's going to bring us together, you guys need to be more sensitive. You guys need to dress, you know, more homosexual or whatever. You know, you women need to uh, uh, man up and be more responsible and this this and that and and pull yourself up by your bootstraps. I'm like, man, I don't like no woman that wear boots. You know, so as long as we are vastly different, we're going to come closer together. As long as we are trying to become the same. Would would you know we're going to be vastly apart because men don't like men. Men, I'll say it again, men don't like men, and women don't like yeah. women. If a man likes a man, he likes a man as you know uh, in, in, in the manly sphere, as men do, but not like women. And if women a woman likes a woman, she likes her in the woman the womany sphere, you know, as women, you know, but not as like like men. Because a woman can't satisfy a woman like a man, and a man can't satisfy another man like a woman. Uh, it, it, it's well, I tell you, boy, this this is uh, <laughs> that's why they commit the most suicide. They say it's because of bullying. While, while all of the the black slave codes and Jim Crow and all this kind of stuff, uh, why was not our you know suicide rates high? You know, uh, uh, denied denied uh, uh, equal education, not not same. I mean, not education with them but you know denied equal education denied equal textbooks you know bullied hung lynched you know uh you talk about mm -hmm. how they went to uh emmett till's house his relative's house and pulled like four days later pulled him out next thing they saw was a bloated body tied to a a, a fan a fan generator or something you know uh, to help hold down under the water you know living under all that why are the suicide rates so low you know as compared to the the rich and affluent the suicide rates are low you know a lower so again you know um they can't say their their suicide rates are high because of bullying and and and, and non-acceptance thing they can't they can't claim that the fact is when a man acts like a woman kill yourself that that's the fact you know well, if we if you look at it um there the deception again is not something that we men started um, we've been too easy and that's been our flaw, but we did not start the deception. We didn't say to them, okay, well, look, start acting more like men, but they did say, well, we want you to be, we want you to act more like women, be more sensitive, uh, dress this way. So in a nutshell, one of the reasons I've said that they are at war with us in the West and, and increasingly beyond the West is because they will outright tell you lies about what they want if they realize what it is they want. And if they don't realize then, they'll, then, then they will inadvertently deceive you because they're self-deluded. Whatever the case is, they're not going to tell you because they're already taking what, what Allah has said to put together, which is them and us. And they're saying, well, let's take one of these and, and, and tell it to run from others. So instead of a situation uh, that, in which it appears to be a mutual attraction, they're making it more like a hunter-prey scenario. They're acting like prey instead of acting like another gender. And so that's the reason why you have that, that expression. Um, you don't ask fish how to catch fish. You ask another fisherman who catches them. Exactly. Why, why is it that we have to be fishermen and they're fish? Because that's a hunter prey type scenario. So what, they don't actually want men? That's how they're acting. They're deluding themselves. Then they turn around and they delude us. And then when they realize what it is, they just keep on lying anyway. Because at the end, the only motive to do something like that is, I mean, if you're going to deny your own needs just to... Uh, just to keep the other party of that mutual need unfulfilled is contempt. The contempt for, um, for men is the only motive that's left when you add up everything that they're doing. First, the first they're lied to by other, you know, the younger women are lied to by older women about what, what it is that women want. So they're told to say what sounds good, but they're young. You, you could kind of overlook that. But I mean, by the time they get to be 18, they know what it is. They, matter of fact, sometimes even by 15, because by 15, they'll sit up and say, well, I, I want a man that sags his pants because I don't want no nerve. So what they're given is this, this skewed idea of manhood. So by the time you're done with high school, when they say that they want a guy that's, that's uh, and they list all these good things, they know they're lying. At that point, they know. They know that they've actually, uh, they know that they're assessing manhood um, according to stereotypes. They just don't care that they're stereotypical. The only reason for all of this deception is contempt. There's no other reason for it. 
this this deception has caused them, as you said, has caused them the long term depression. When they get a cat, they're trying to replace a man. When they get a dog, they're trying to replace a man. When we get pets, we're not trying to replace the women. We still like the women. We're drawn to them. But we don't use pets as replacements for women. They'll say, of course you all do. Y'all are guys that you, you, you don't have any control over yourselves. But in reality, we don't view the differences that we don't view the pet as a replacement for her, where she's using the pet as a replacement for us. And the only purpose that their deception serves is contempt. Because they're denying themselves just to deny men. Well, that's contempt. I mean, uh, uh, that means they, they either, well, that pretty much means they view us as being that evil and therefore that deserving. I mean, if you take a situation in which um, even when somebody, let's say in Palestine, can't get a hold of, of uh, firearms, but he can get a hold of maybe um, one of those fertilizers that, that's uh, explosive. So he straps himself, goes into a, a cafe in Israel and takes himself and the cafe goers out just to get at the Israelis because of what they've done to his people. That motive is not nearly as, as, as um, mean spirited as the motive that she has when she lies to men about what it is that, that they want. Because if he does that in Israel, as an example, he's doing it because of aggressions that were done to them. He didn't get away that he could attack while still sparing his own life. So in order to save the lives of others, he's going to take many lives of an enemy um, as a deterrent so that his people won't be an easy target. He's doing it in the combat situation. He didn't choose the combat. His people didn't choose it. But when she sits up and lies to men about what women want so that men will be deceived into being exactly what it is that women don't want there. You can't explain that with any sort of other motive except for contempt for these guys. Now, what did we do to deserve contempt from them? Historically speaking, we did not even start the conflict. We were too interested in them for any man in any, in the world to have started the conflict with the women. It start it's, it's, it starts with them because they have such a contempt for the normal man that they want him to make himself un even more unattractive. That's all that is. And, um, and that's why I said earlier, if the intellect is wrong and their heart's right, then they listen to the intellect. And if their heart is wrong and the intellect is right, then they listen to the heart. They listen to whichever one is wrong, who's whispering to them to do that and why they're listening. And you, when you said it was the D word, I actually thought you were going to use another D, to be honest. Not, not the curse word, not that, but the one that's mentioned in, uh, in, in the Old Testament, New Testament, and in our Quran. I thought you were going to mention that D word, because if you look at how they're behaving, they're behaving as though, uh, they're behaving as though a certain jinn um, who got rebellious ideas is whispering to them. And that's how they're, that's who they're following. That's who they're, they're listening to. Yes. Because n nobody else has an interest in this. It's, it's similar to white supremacy in that regard. How did the, how did almost the entire world become against dark skin and abundant melanin counts? It wasn't us that went around the world and told them this. This is before electronic communication. So somebody who had the means to travel very quickly and whispered directly into the subconscious minds of people a long time ago actually did these things. And the motive was that he hated Adam, alayhi salam. So therefore, the closer you resemble Adam and Hawa, may Allah be pleased with her, the more he whispers this hatred of him into other people's hearts. And even at times into our own hearts. He's the only one with the ability and the motive to do it. It's so you can see the white supremacy is actually a satanic, uh, uh, is literally a satanic uh, uh, false religion. It's the same thing with this. When you look at how they're waging war against men, who went around and told them to do exactly what it is or say exactly what it takes to deceive us into eliminating and disqualifying ourselves? They didn't have any meetings for this uh, because this precedes electronic communication. There's no point at which all of them got together and said, this is what we're going to do. The barbershop, I mean, the hair salons might be a more recent phenomenon doing this, yeah. but you look at just how difficult they've been compared to how easy men have made it. Who told them to do that? Because it wasn't in their best interest. And that, that's where you have to start looking at that invisible one that has the motive uh, and the means to do it in order to split the genders up. It wasn't, it's, it's, he would not have had it as easy a time telling men um, to, well, you know, deceive them and just have them running around in circles trying to qualify, qualify themselves in your eyes. He wouldn't have had an easy time doing it. So he went to the women and told them that and they listened. 
And now uh, uh, what's happening is that the men aren't really blaming. Now men are learning not to blame themselves when they're by themselves, because most men uh, can easily wind up by themselves. All you got to do is focus on your work responsibilities. Don't chase these women. They're not going to chase you, even if they like you. So you can wind up by yourself easily. We Men are now waking up to this. So we don't blame ourselves. So we don't take ourselves out as much behind that. Whereas in their case, they can't really uh, they know that it's up to them if they're going to stay by themselves their whole lives or not. But when they're getting older, they're realizing that they played a game. And they waged war, participated in this mental war on men and taught men to do things that would, dis that, would, that would disqualify them in women's eyes to make themselves less attractive. They told men to act more like women that they did not want. And therefore, they eliminated already a majority of the men because the men that don't qualify largely don't qualify because of what they have been taught by women in TV. And they're, they're realizing they set this up. They, they made this bed. Now they got they, they to gotta lay in it. And so that's with, when they do take themselves out, that's probably a large part of why they're doing it. They thought they had forever when they were young and they were cute and then they got older. Nature caught up with them. And then they realize, OK, it, it time's up and I can't go back in time and, and, and change things. And so, you know, there's 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 nothing else to stick around for. And so either they just wait until death overtakes them or they go ahead and off themselves. But it's something that they set up. And they literally had no other motive except for contempt for men. And who whispered that contempt into their ears? Because nature didn't do it and it wasn't a law. He didn't design them that way. So literally, I think that when they off themselves, I think literally they're coming to a realization that they listened to an evil spirit all this time and that their friends did and that they all got tricked. And then they just say it's over. It, he's, he succeeded in ruining everything. I suspect that this is one of the last thoughts they have um, before they take the sleeping pills or whatever it is they use to off themselves. Um, because there, there's, you really can't explain it any other way.